Hi, you're with Chandeep once again at Goodly. And in this last video, I'm going to speak about that what are the new things that are there in uh, Power BI, which are not there in the native Excel pivot tables. The first one is pretty simple, is that you do not have the ability to customize the field value as a thousand or a million. So what you would have to do is, uh, you would have to go back to your data, maybe convert this into a thousand or a million, add another column, and then and then maybe add that to your pivot table. Or the other option was to go to the analyze tab and in field items and sets, you would have created a calculated field. But in Power BI, you could actually customize these values automatically into thousands or millions, which is a nice feature to have. Please take a look. All right, I'm in Power BI and I would like to customize my sales numbers into maybe thousands. So I will click on my matrix and go over to the format tab and you can see that I have field formatting here. In field formatting, I will choose to display the units as not as none, but maybe as thousands. And instantaneously, you can see that the numbers are displayed in thousands. The second feature that is there, Power BI, which is not there in the native Excel, the ability to define relationships. And I would like to take you to a different data set to explain what do I mean by that. All right, this is a blank Power BI file and I'm just gonna hop over to the data tab. You could take a look that I have two tables here. One is a sales table, the other one is a products table. In the sales table, you can see that I have multiple columns here. I have the date of the transaction, that means on which date did the sale happen, a unique transaction ID, a region, a product ID, the number of units sold, the channel, the affiliate code, and the interval, right? But I do not have the price of the product. That means if I want to find out the total sales, I do not have that, how much is it? I mean, what's the selling price of this product? Unless and until I have the selling price, I would not be able to get that and multiply that with the units to find the sales. In your Excel, you'll have to write a VLOOKUP here, go over to the products table, and from the products table, get the price of the item where your common lookup column is your product code and get the price of the third or the fourth or the fifth column, whatever it is, and then place that price uh, in every single row of the sales table and then maybe do a multiplication of units into price. That's how you would do it. And for every other thing that you want to analyze, you would have to create a separate column for that. And that's how you kind of build pivot tables in Excel. Now that drastically changes in Power BI. What you have is the ability to define relationships. That means I'm going to tell this, uh, sorry, this product ID and the product table product code are related to each other. And whenever I need, why don't you do a VLOOKUP inside your brain, but don't do a VLOOKUP right now and create an additional column right here. How do you create a relationship? I go over to the relationships tab and you can take a look that sales table and the products tables are not related. There is no indication. So I'm gonna take my um, products table product ID. Uh, you know, the relationship will go from here, which is my transactions table to the lookup table where I'm going to find it and I'll link it. So product ID is linked. I'm just dragging it like an arrow and I'll link it over here. And you can see that you have many products sold. So you have a star, which is many, and you just have one product code here. So one to many relationship is now set up. Uh, how does it benefit? Uh, now, what you could do is, let's say for example, I'm just gonna define the uh, benefit of the relationship. I am again choosing a matrix, which is nothing but my pivot table. And from the sales table, I at least have the units. As of now, forget about sales, but I at least have the units. So I drag the units into my values, right? Which is 2670 total units sold. And if I would like to analyze the units by maybe another category, but the category is not there in the sales table. Had you been working in Excel, you would have to get the category by using a VLOOKUP into your sales table. But now that is not needed. So you just take the category and put it into rows and you have nice and easy split of the total units by a category, which is coming from the products table. So the relationships are working here, right? That's how the relationships work. I mean, it's much more um, deeper than what I've just explained to you, but I hope you understood that I could take the columns from multiple data sets and then without applying a VLOOKUP by applying a relationship, I can filter down a particular metric from a column which is in another table. I'm gonna talk about the third uh, a very, very powerful feature, which is the ability of writing DAX measures. Now, as of now, you can see that I definitely do not have the total sales. I, I don't have that. 
So uh, one way is to definitely write a VLOOKUP, which you can definitely do that in, uh, in Power BI, but it's not needed. The trick is to write a measure. Measures are DAX formulas, which were not there in the regular pivot tables. It's there in Power Pivot, but it's not there in regular pivot tables in Excel. Let's just take a look at how can we write a DAX measure. I'm just gonna write an extremely simple DAX measure. So in my sales table, I'm just gonna right click and click on a new measure and uh, I'm gonna write maybe total sales right here. So I'm gonna calculate total sales without creating a column. So I'm gonna say that uh, uh, some X go in every single row of the sales table. I'm not kind of explaining to you what these measures are and what does some X mean, but as of now, I'm just writing a simple measure. So uh, in go in every single row of the sales table, apply a VLOOKUP and get me the price of the product and why don't you take that price and multiply it with the units that I have in my sales table. And that's the measure. Now, once I do that, you can see that I have total sales created. Now this is a measure, but this is not a column. If you just take a look at the sales table, there is no column created right here. It's, it's kind of empty. So that's a measure. That's a formula that we've written. If I drag my total sales inside my metric visualization, you can see that I have the total sales right here. Now, uh, and the total sales is coming from the sales table, but, the filtering of the total sales is happening by a category which is coming from the products table. Isn't that pretty awesome? And measures allow you to write simple or extremely complicated calculations without creating additional columns, which wasn't the capability in the regular pivot table. All that you could do is a regular sum or a count or a show values as a percentage of grand total. That's all about it. But you couldn't do extremely sophisticated calculations, which you could now do with DAX, which is the formula language of Power BI. All right, those were the ways in which you could replicate similar stuff that you do it in Excel pivot tables in Power BI. If you think that I've missed out on anything, and if you have any suggestions or any questions, please feel free to put down a comment. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching this. You take care and bye-bye.